The reasons that I prefer a systems approach is first that it, it isn't a linear approach, looking for simple cause and simple effects, because in, in almost all walks of human endeavor, things are never that simple. Second, uh, it drives you to think relationally about the problem. In other words, not to think about isolated individuals or isolated organizations. You think about organizations and individuals and individuals and individuals in interactions with each other in a dynamic system. And a dynamic system is forever changing. It's not static. If you think in a linear fashion, you tend to think in a static fashion. If you think in a complex fashion, you tend to think in this relational and interactive fashion. And finally, um, I use it because it's what I think of as a, what's called by some writers, a realist approach. That is to say, it gets much closer to the reality of a problem than it does if we abstract from a complicated problem a simple solution. Um, we're not looking at the real problem. So let me give you an example. If I were to say to, to you, if you were a smoker, well, all you need to do is stop. Pull yourself together and stop smoking. Job done. Well, actually, it doesn't work like that because smoking is a complex behavior. It's also an addiction. Um, we also live in a society where it's still relatively commonplace. And it's only through a range of complex measures across the totality of the system relating to advertising, education, taxation, availability, and visibility, for example, um, that we've been able to tackle the problem. So simply telling people that it's bad for them wouldn't have worked and still wouldn't work. It's all those other things that we've done in that complex interactive system um, that that's represents the reality of the problem and represents the nature of what it is we're trying to deal with. One of the key reasons we're using a systems approach is that we want to have the opportunity to create knowledge um, that is locally relevant and useful uh, about and with local communities. And uh, systems approaches allow, have allowed us to gather data um, about what's happening in the prevention system in a local community with local community stakeholders guiding and directing uh, the nature of that data and how we go about collecting it. More than that, we're taking that back into the community to help us interpret what that means locally in the identification of a key local problem that then we will continue to work on. And I think the key aspect of that is being able to create knowledge in the context in which it can be acted on, where we're not looking at any one component, but looking at all of the data and interactions as a whole. So uh, one aspect of systems work that I think is important is uh, the visual tools, the frameworks and tools that we use to represent a system. Uh, and often uh, diagrams like a causal loop diagram can be a very helpful tool for two reasons. It can be a helpful tool to help people understand the broader system within which they work and where they, uh, they are, are affecting the system. So uh, you can use a, a large complex systems map, for example, to enable people in uh, different government departments to understand where they have a responsibility. So uh, often people in transportation won't think that they have a role to play in obesity, but in fact they do impact some of the aspects of uh, some of the variables that, that impact obesity. So on the one hand, there's the opportunity to help people understand where they fit in a system, but there's also the ability to convey the notion that this system is big and messy. We don't actually have to understand all the interconnections, but let's use that as the starting place so that we then seek solutions that are more appropriate for complex problems than the ones that are good for simple or complicated problems. And recognize that if we address something over here, the system may uh, compensate, and, it, and so we can't just do one thing. We have to look at the whole larger picture.